Well, here we are at Fall In War Game Convention, and Josh Warlift, the 3D Printer King, is here. Josh, can you tell us about our Fort William Henry and other items that you have made on the 3D printer machine? Take it away. So, Fort William Hen Henry here in 54 millimeter scale. This is printed on an FDM printer, so this is the uh, spools of like spaghetti-like substance. Um, and uh, how did you have a plate big enough to make something this so large? So this diamond wedge is actually four different pieces. My build plate is only 12 by 12. So uh, I had to break this down into four different pieces and print them separately and then we glued them together. Oh, all right. And then each of these wedges is a separate piece. Okay. Well, now this is the string kind. And how long did it take you to make each one of these little sections? So each one of these sections was about 30 hours of printing. 30 hours? Yep. Boy, I consumed some printing time. <laughs> a little, just a little bit. Yeah, every one, every one of these bastions, um, each section was around 30 hours, with the larger diamond section up here being about 40 hours. Wow. Well, I am so appreciative of this, um, and a lot of people have been coming up and said, ask me how long it took me to use my styrofoam cutter. They don't realize it's 3D printed, and they're like, <laughs> it's too big to be 3D printed. So, um, yeah. I, what, wait a minute, there's tanks in the background. Oh, yeah, we What's have some, that? some 54 millimeter French World War II armor. All right. Uh, this is a Hotchkiss H39 that we printed up. Wow. And, and it's painted, already painted. Yep. And then this is a Suma S35 that we printed. Now, how good are these French tanks, Josh? Uh, well, the Suma, I mean, in my opinion, may have been the uh, finest medium tank of the early part of World War II. Um, the Hotchkiss is, a, you know, that's another story. Now, what's this other little thing? Uh, this is a Belgian T13. You can see the gun is mounted backwards on this Why thing. Why is it mounted backwards? That's just how they made them. Okay. Um, and then you've got the little driver that pops down in there. Well, let me get a close up of the little driver. And he pops down in there. Yep. So, can, can you just give me a little history? I don't know a darn thing about that tank. So, these were, uh, a, I believe it was a Vickers tractor that they mounted a gun and a small turret on the back of. So, and so, how does that go into combat when it's reversed like that? You drive it and turn it around. <laughs> how do you know where you're going? Who the hell came <laughs> up with that? <laughs> Yep. So, how do I use that in a war game? Do you drive up and then turn? Yep. <laughs> All right. And how many crew is in that thing? So, there's two. There's there's a driver and then there's two crew. I think we gave you the figures already because Jim painted them up. All right. And they mount right down in this little slot here and then they service the gun. Okay. Well, I have to say amazing, amazing. And, Josh, I know that uh, you have been up to Fort William Henry with me on several occasions. Can you tell our viewers what's in that bastion there when you walk in the fort? What do they carry in that bastion? They carry Bill's War Games in that yes, bastion. Yes, and it's full of toys and it is. muskets. And yep. That is actually the gift shop at Fort William Henry at Lake George. All right, Josh, anything else you'd like to say? Uh, not that I can think of. Everybody have a great con, and I'll uh, see you around. All right, and when I pass away, who do you get? Goober. Goober the Traveling yep, Bear will exactly. come and live with you. All right, thank you, Josh. Stay safe, be kind, and be courteous.